No spider in North America is more feared than the Black Widow. Legend has it that their venom is so deadly that a bite leaves you with only an hour to live. And since they're found all over the continent, there's a real possibility of you encountering this spider. So the question is, if there was a Black Widow right in front of you, do you know what to do to survive? Today, we're gonna show you. Black Widows have terrified people around the world for generations. Their red hourglass, an infamous symbol of how dangerous they're said to be. Most of us in the United States grow up hearing that a bite from this spider is a death sentence, and that they're not afraid to use it if you get too close. But let me ask you this, how much do you really know about Black Widows? If you saw one, would you know what it's gonna do? Do you know what you should do? It's okay if you don't yet, because the truth is, most people don't either. But today, we're going to teach you everything you need to survive a Black Widow encounter. My name is Harrison, and this is Evan. We're twin brothers on a mission to help you become an insider in the natural world. And one of the most important parts of that is showing you the truth about the most misunderstood animals on Earth. So you understand why they have the scary features that they have, and so you can keep yourself safe around them. These are things you'll want to know about Black Widows because they're not uncommon by any means. In fact, people have thousands of encounters with them every year, and not just in natural habitat either. Widow spiders are infamous for moving into human developments, and they're perfectly adapted to life in the forgotten corners of our sheds, garages, and other sheltered places. That's why today, we're joining our good friend and local wildlife expert Zachary Gray in southern Mississippi to search for widows in maybe the last place you'd expect to find America's deadliest spider. Some of the most interesting and infamous wildlife can show up in really interesting places. We're actually on a cattle farm right now, Zach's family's cattle farm, and this area, we're told, is loaded with widows. They're gonna be in the fields, and then of course, around the buildings as well. So we're gonna have to check everything we can, and the strategy is flipping cover. Going to all the protein tubs, the water tubs, out in the fields, flipping them over, and seeing if any of the widows have taken refuge there. These animals do not like to be out in the open, and especially not during the day. But I'll tell you what, when we find those guys, we're gonna have to get out of this sun, because it is brutal. The intense heat wasn't making our search easy, but it did have one advantage. We knew the spiders wouldn't be hanging out anywhere that was too hot, so it narrowed down the number of places we had to check. Widows generally prefer to build their webs in dark, dry, secluded places, such as under tree bark or in piles of wood or rocks. But they're also very comfortable moving in with us. In fact, black widows are considered to be synanthropic which means they are regularly found living alongside people. And it's actually quite common to see their characteristic messy, tangled webs in garages, basements, and other human structures. And I hate to break it to the arachnophobes watching, but this is true across most of North America. Between the three species, the northern, southern, and western widows, they can be found throughout the continental US, and in parts of Canada and Mexico too. They're quite shy and reclusive spiders though, so even if you do have one living near you, it's unlikely that you'd even see it most of the time. Zach's farm is a perfect example of this. There's no shortage of good cover here, but even as we searched through the many tools and structures around the property, we weren't turning up any widows. Finally, we came to a good looking row of containers sitting in the shade, and it turned out to be the perfect conditions for our target spider. How about these two? Yep. Same time? Yep. Could you imagine if we get a double widow? That would be crazy. Strand of web there. Look yeah. at that. Look at that. Before we even flip it, check that out. This looks really good, and that is kind of that irregular pattern. It's not a nice, pretty web like an orb weaver would make. All right, ready? A lot of roaches. Wow. Uh, widow. Right widow. there. Yeah, little one. Another one right here. I got a widow. Big female right here, bro. Check it out, check it out. Holy uh, cow! I need containers in your bag. We need to get her out. There's another little one in here, but that female is choice. She's not going anywhere. That's good, at least. Here you go. Thanks. That is the biggest widow I have ever seen in my life. Yep. Nice. 
What on earth? Water. Look at the size of that Southern Black Widow. That is about as good as it's gonna get, I think. Oh man, that's cool. All right, let's get her somewhere a little more controlled, maybe move along this fence a bit. Let's drop the cover back. But I think we have our star. No way. That is a monster Black Widow. I am still in awe of oh, this yeah. animal. Already she's spun a pretty decent web in the container here because that's how she's gonna feel most comfortable. But I do think we need to get her out onto like a stick or something yeah. where she's a little more visible. I agree. Um, this one needs, yeah, something kind of long that she can sit on the end of. She is robust. There we are. This is the fattest widow spider I have ever seen in my life she is about to pop she's definitely carrying eggs that's the thing yeah for that reason we really want to be extra gentle with this animal but that is one impressive animal and there's no mistaking it either when you see that jet black body and an hourglass like that you know you're looking at a widow this is i would say the most infamous spider in all of the united states the mm -hmm. black widow has such a fearsome reputation but what's funny is what they're actually gonna do if you see one is really not that much the thing about these animals is they really do not like people they want nothing to do with us and her first reaction as soon as we flipped her under that tub was to tuck as deep into her web as she could and that is really the attitude that every widow we've ever encountered will take all they want to do is get away absolutely right now she's just kind of spinning a web on this stick trying to make herself feel as comfortable as possible and that's exactly what we want if she's content to sit here on the end of the stick then we are happy to have her there and this is an interesting opportunity to talk about what a black widow will actually do if you encounter one in the wild. Now, widows actually have a very interesting defense mechanism. What they'll do is they'll produce a little bit of web and then scoop it up with their back legs and kind of throw it at you. And what they're hoping to do is gum up the jaws or the claws of whatever predator is bothering them so they can make a quick escape. And it's interesting because everyone only really thinks about the bite and the venom that these spiders carry. But actually, a lot of their defense mechanisms are super passive. Exactly, and probably their most famous passive defense mechanism is actually hard to see from this angle, but it's on the underside of her abdomen. They have that famous red hourglass pattern. And basically what that red coloration is doing is acting as a warning. It's aposematic coloration, warning coloration, telling a predator that she is venomous and you would not not want to mess with her. And usually it's those bright flashes of color in nature. You don't see them all too often. So it's just enough to startle a predator and make them rethink trying to make a meal out of this spider. And as you might expect, the venom is incredibly potent. It has a lethal dose, an LD50 rating of 1.3 milligrams per kilogram. What that means is just 1.3 milligrams of this venom per kilogram of body mass that it's being injected into is enough to kill 50 50% of the test subjects that they administered in the studies that they used to measure the venom. And the crazy thing about that LD50 rating, it's given to pretty much any venomous animal that's able to be studied. And their toxicity, that 1.3 milligrams per kilogram, is almost twice as toxic as most rattlesnakes in the United States. So the question is, if their venom is so potent, why is it that deaths are so rare? And the answer is that the dosage makes the poison. Exactly. They only have a tiny amount of venom stored in their body, and each bite delivers a virtually microscopic amount of venom. So even though it is super potent, there's just not enough of it to do the amount of damage you'd expect for how strong the venom is. Absolutely. One of my favorite facts about this spider is that a rattlesnake will inject more venom by weight in a single bite than this spider has body mass. So that just goes to show how little venom they have compared to the less toxic but far more dangerous rattlesnakes. These guys have a potent neurotoxic venom called latrotoxin, which is unique to this genus of spiders, Latrodectus, and it can cause some really unpleasant symptoms. We're talking about nausea, vomiting, intense muscle pain and spasms. We've heard from some of our friends who've taken bites from widows that it's hard to sleep, it's hard to eat. It really does mess up your whole day. Absolutely. And can last even a couple days, actually, mm -hmm. in the, really severe cases. The pain can be 
excruciating. Mm. It is not something you want to experience. But one thing we want to talk about is these animals have such a strong, potent venom. But why? What is the purpose of all that toxicity? It's not a weapon against a predator like us. The real reason that a black widow would bite is to capture their prey. This is really the key to their survival as hunters. Widows are not particularly fast moving. They're not terribly strong either. So they're really relying on that venom to overpower their prey and stop it in its tracks so they can pull it back into the web and eat it. They're feeding on all kinds of different insects and other invertebrates, but that venom is actually strong enough to take down vertebrates as well. These guys can take down small reptiles and even mammals. There have been rodents found in widow webs, so it is absolutely capable of taking down animals much larger than them. Given the diversity of animals that they'll catch, it's hard to overstate how important their venom is to black widows. Their spindly legs and bulbous body aren't built to subdue prey with brute strength. Without their webs, they really wouldn't have any way to handle their food. And that's not an insignificant challenge for them, because at only an inch or so long, widows often have to overpower animals that are larger than themselves in order to get a meal. This comes with real risk, because a well-placed bite from even a beetle or a grasshopper could do some serious damage to these delicate spiders. Not only that, but like most spiders, widows rely on their venom to actually digest their meals, as their bite injects a host of digestive enzymes that break down the prey's body and allow the spider to consume all the nutrients inside. When you realize how critical their venom is to their survival and know how little of it they have, it starts to make sense why black widows are very reluctant to bite. The venom just isn't a good defensive option, and it's too important to waste. The only situation where they would bite is if they're trying to save their own life. So the key to avoiding negative encounters is preventing that situation in the first place. Now, it is worth noting that deaths from black widows are actually exceedingly rare. There hasn't been one on record in the United States for decades. But ironically, one of the most common ways for people to be bitten by black widows is actually when they are trying to kill the spider. Exactly, anything you do that gets your body close to this spider is just putting yourself at risk. So if you're trying to kill it, it by swatting it, squashing it with your hand, that is actually going to put you at the highest risk of potentially getting those fangs lodged in your skin. As long as you give them literally an inch of space, there is nothing they can do. Now, avoiding a bite from one of these spiders is actually not as difficult as you might think. Really, the only way you could even potentially take a bite from this spider is if you were literally touching it. They're not inclined to chase after you, they're not gonna jump onto you even if you're close. You'd have to literally put a hand somewhere on this spider and apply pressure to it. That downward pressure is really what's gonna set them off. So to avoid that, it's pretty simple. If you're in an area where a widow could possibly be hanging out, any kind of cover in a bar, in a shed, a garage, something like that. Or if you're just kind of working on your property Mm -hmm. flipping cover for any reason really. All you have to do to avoid a bite from a widow or actually any spider or insect that could be hanging out there is just don't stick your hand into somewhere where you can't see it. Give any kind of cover a gentle tap just to get any insect or arachnid to scurry off from where you're gonna actually grip it from. And in general, if you're putting on old clothing or working with tools that have been sitting for a while, just shake them out before you go to really put them on or grab them and that'll prevent any kind of negative interaction Interaction, certainly from a spider like this. So what we're gonna do now is put to the test the supposed aggression that widows have because people will swear up and down that these spiders are coming after them, trying to chase them, trying to hurt people, and it just isn't true. So we want to put all of that to rest right now. All right, you ready? Yep. You guys ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. Thanks, Zach, audience. <laughs> now, this is never something anyone should attempt to do at home. There is real risk involved here. She's coming down slowly because she doesn't want to leave her web. Exactly. She's entering onto a foreign object. Now this is the position we want to keep her most comfortable because remember, they are hanging out under cover for most of the time. So by cupping my hands like that, I'm basically mimicking the types of cover that she would naturally feel most comfortable in. Actually, she seems content to just sit for a little bit and then she'll explore and sit and explore. Zach described it as almost like clockwork. Their behavior is very easy to predict. 
Now, that does not mean that this is ever something that anyone should try. Certainly not. This is a medically significant animal. This is an animal that can hurt people, but they don't want to. They're not aggressive. If there was any desire for her to bite me or bite Evan, she would have done it by now. But the reality is, black widows are just like any other invertebrate. Just because they have a potentially dangerous bite does not mean they want to use it any more than anything else. These animals are just out here trying to survive, get food for themselves, and keep out of harm's way. There's nothing about attacking people going through her mind right now. All she's trying to do is figure out this situation and get back to her nest unharmed. They're not the monsters that people make them out to be. And it's very important that we learn to coexist with these animals as we're demonstrating right now, even in a scenario where you're way closer to these spiders than you should ever get, it is still not their inclination to bite. They're not trying to harm us. They're just trying to make a living for themselves in the only way they know how. I find it amazing that there's so much fear about these animals and yet people don't see this side of them. And they're actually helping you out too. If you have widows around, they're gonna be taking care of all kinds of little insects, flies and beetles and moths and things, all kinds of insects that some people don't actually like to have around. And in that case, the widow is gonna be one of your best friends because they're such effective predators. And they also are prey for a lot of animals too. This is a mid-level consumer here in this ecosystem. So it's important both for the widows and for lots of other species that we continue to keep these guys around. Around. This is the biggest black widow I have ever seen in my life, and yet absolutely no hint of aggression. All she's trying to do is get on with her life, and it is now definitely time for her to do that. So hopefully she can produce that egg sac and start the next generation of black widows here in Mississippi. We are gonna get this girl back under her tub. She has been an incredible sport, an incredible ambassador for her species. Actually, I think her web was on the ground, wasn't it? Yeah, it was right down here, actually. She Alrighty. was in this corner. That has got to be one of the most special interactions with a spider I think we've ever had. Come on, little one. There we go. Now she's safe. Woohoo! Wow, man. That was awesome. So, if there was a black widow right in front of you now, would you know what to do to survive? As it turns out, you don't really need to do much of anything. Coexisting peacefully with Black Widows is 100% possible, and all you need is a bit of understanding about their behavior and preferred habitat. For starters, you now know that they like dark, sheltered areas and can live in human structures. So, to prevent negative interactions from happening when you're working in your garage or basement, get into the habit of not sticking your hands where you can't see them and checking undercover before you grab it. Keep in mind that they rarely move far from their web unless it's disturbed, so looking out for their webs can give you a good idea of if there are any widows around. Honestly though, the biggest thing you need to remember to survive a Black Widow encounter is that if you simply leave the spider alone, they will be more than happy to do the same for you. It may seem a bit anticlimactic, but these are truly timid and non-aggressive spiders, and even if they are threatened, they're much more likely to run away or kick web at you than ever try to bite. But black widows aren't the only spiders in North America with a terrifying reputation. The brown recluse is infamous for its supposedly flesh-decaying venom, and to make matters worse, they're even more common in human spaces than widows are. But are all of the crazy stories you hear about these spiders actually true? To find out, check out this video, where we show you why everything you think you know about the brown recluse might just be wrong. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one. This video was filmed in front of a live stock audience. <laughs> what are you doing?